Today is the feast of St. James the Apostle and we read Matthew chapter 20 verse 20 to 28. James the Apostle or James the Great was the brother of John and son of Zebedee, a family of fishermen in Galilee and the two brothers were among the first disciples to be called by Jesus on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. Matthew says of James and John, immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. We don't know the name of their mother who features in this passage. Sadly, women in the narrative aren't always named. And we don't know the backstory to why she approached Jesus with this request. Was she ambitious for her sons? Or was she voicing their own ambition? Was she seeking worldly advancement, misunderstanding the nature of Jesus' kingship? If so, she illustrates a misunderstanding that Jesus often had to deal with. In the previous passage, he's just been speaking to the Twelve about his coming arrest and death. And in the aftermath of the mother's request, he repeats that his destiny is to give his life. To be fair, the Twelve themselves didn't seem to grasp this fully, if at all, until it happened. So perhaps her idea was not too surprising. Jesus is gentle with her and simply says, well, if I grant you that, it will not turn out quite like you think. If you're picturing a throne with two leading but subordinate seats on each side, well, I'm picturing a cross with two crosses, one on each side which is where I will be lifted up. As matters did turn out, James was executed about a decade later after the crucifixion during a persecution by Herod Agrippa of the Christians, as recounted in Acts. He drank the cup that Jesus drank. The other 10 disciples were angry with James and John and may have resented them trying to steal a march rather than taking issue with their expectations of the kingdom. So Jesus spoke to all 12 as he explains to them that in the kingdom things don't work like they do elsewhere. It's not a competition. No jostling for places belongs here. No rat race. The values of the kingdom are the other way up. This is the life of mutual service, of giving, of selflessness. Jesus modelled this and they saw it in him every day. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. Matthew doesn't have the story of Jesus washing the disciples' feet, which is in John's Gospel, but the thought is the same. If I, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you ought also to wash one another's feet.